Hey everyone, and welcome to Suited Aces Poker, a brand new kind of poker vlog. My name is James, and working behind the scenes is Thomas. We are both recreational poker players out of Phoenix, Arizona, and obsessed with the high quality collection of poker vlogs on YouTube. One night over a beer, Thomas and I really wished we could find a poker vlog that kind of picked out the five or maybe 10 best hands of that week from all of the poker vloggers across YouTube and we couldn't find it. So we thought, you know what? Let's do it. Let's pull together 10 of the best every week of the hundreds of poker hands that are now available from poker vloggers across YouTube. So this is it. We're doing it ourselves. We've called it Suited Aces Poker. And each week we will review hundreds of poker vlog hands, whittle them down to what we consider to be 10 of the best for your enjoyment. So let's get started. This is week one, the first week of January 2022. And we've got it all this week. Quads, is that a royal? And is he really wearing a glove? Kicking us off at number 10 this week is Rampage playing 510 at the MGM Springfield in Massachusetts. And I don't know, are you calling this re raise on the flop? Pick up 10 9 of diamonds. We're on the button, and there's an early position open to $40. Here on the button, happy to make the call, and that entices the big blind to call as well. So we're off to a flop three ways, which comes Jack of Diamonds, Eight of Diamonds, and a Six. If you don't know what that means, that means I have 80% of a straight flush. Unfortunately, 80% of a straight flush doesn't really give you anything, so I'm still sitting with 10 high, but still a pretty good flop. Anyways, the big blind actually docks out $125, which causes the early position player to fold, and it's my turn to act, and I have raising chips in hand. This big blind player has a pretty decent sized stack, and Obviously, I am just so, so, so happy to pile in money in the middle. <sighs> I put in a raise to $400, and this player thinks about it, and he doesn't fold, and he doesn't call either. <laughs> he puts in another raise, three bets to 960 freaking dollars. Oh my god, this player has about $1,500 behind. So my all-in here, which I would be going all-in, would be around $2,500 total making this easily over a $5,000 pot in this 510 game. And yeah, press record, ship it. I'm all in and he calls it off as assumed. I don't think he's going to be folding after putting in $1,000 in the middle essentially, but I'm expecting him to have some sets or maybe even higher flush draws. I'm just hoping he has a set because then I'm ahead against sets here, but hoping he doesn't have a higher flush draw. We decide to run it once and the turn Offsuit queen, bink. We have the nuts, the river is an ace. I show my hand with essentially the nuts behind king 10, but that seems unlikely. And this player shows king jack. Offsuit, ship it, ship it, ship it. It's a massive, massive pot. Got it in with 10 high and ended up with the winner. At number nine, Lexo is at the Commerce in California playing 1020. And I don't know, anyone else bet in the river? Moving on to the next hand, pocket aces worked out so well the first time, so why don't we play them again? Red pocket aces, $40 straddle, raised to 120 I 3 bet to 420 my opponent makes the call. Heads up, queen, 10, 8, 2 hearts. Actually a pretty bad board for pocket aces. There's so many hands now that beat me, but I'm not going to check. I continue here with a $350 bet. This is not the best board for a 3-bet pot, like I said earlier. We're losing to a lot of hands like Queen-10, Pocket-10s, Pocket-8s, pocket Jack-9 for a straight, King-Jack for a straight, or even Pocket-Queens. All of these hands my opponent can potentially have, raising preflop and then calling my 3-bet. So I am going to proceed with some caution once he makes the call on the flop. We're going now to the turn, which is a very interesting one. It's the Jack of Diamonds, brings in Ace-King for the nuts. I do have some history with this opponent. I played with him in Florida and I'm almost positive that he'd be putting in a 4-bet preflop with Ace-King and he knows that I know that as well. So I feel like this is a card I should continue to bet on because I'm the only person in this hand that can have the nuts. But given my actual hand, just one pair, pocket aces, this is actually a really terrible board. Any 9 makes a straight now and there's a ton of 2 pairs in sets. 
I distinctly remember during this hand that I was thinking to myself, what are you doing betting on this card? But then I thought, well, I feel like it's kind of a card I have to bet on and I can still get called by worse hands, ace queen and king queen he has to call me with. If he does have a flush draw with a small suited connector with diamonds or hearts, he's going to have to make the call as well, which he does decide to do. So I'm probably going to give up here unless I hit a magical king on the river, which we do not get. It's a brick. And now I have to decide, should I check, should I bet small, or should I turn my hand into a bluff and jam all in? I do have about a pot sized bet left here. I could jam all in, turning my aces into a bluff, representing ace king. Like I said earlier, I'm the only person who can have the nuts, and he understands that. Maybe he will hear a fold to pair like queen jack, queen 10, or might possibly hear a fold to set. However, what I've learned in poker is that people do not like to fold strong hands on the river, no matter how much you bet. So I end up thinking for a while and decide to check. He thinks for a little bit of time and checks back. I show pocket aces and they're good. On that board, holding pocket aces, I was definitely not expecting to see those chips again. At number eight, Alex Duval is playing 2-5 at the win in Vegas. Poker aside, what is the guy in C5 wearing? Next up, we have King Jack of Hearts, a beautiful hand, and there is an under the gun limp for $5. We raise to $30 under the gun one and the big blind and the under the gun call. The flop comes nine, six, deuce, two hearts. Action checks to me and with a flush draw and so many good turn cards, I'm going to bet. I bet $60 into about 90. Oddly enough, the big blind min raises to 120. And even more odd, the under the gun limper ends up calling. I am certainly treading lightly here, but obviously not folding. I make the call for $60 more. The turn is the deuce of clubs. There is now almost $500 in the pot and what has been very weird action. This time the big blind bets 180 and the under the gun player makes the call. Now that this board is paired, sets now beat us and we cannot win, so we are gone. I fold, but let's see how this hand turns out. The river is the queen of diamonds. The big blind does not slow down and bets $200. The under the gun player ends up jamming all in for about $900. And the big blind folds. Under the gun will later say he had pocket sixes for a full house, which obviously makes sense, but really not sure what the big blind had. <laughs> that was a weird one. And number seven is Mariano, and he is playing in our hometown of Scottsdale, Arizona at the Talking Stick Resort. He's in a 3-5 game. Are you calling a turn flush? Moments later, I open ace 10 to 30 in early position and get called by the cutoff and the small blind. Flop comes ace high, so that's cool. I bet 30 again. The cutoff folds, but the small blind calls. Turn card brings in the flush, at which point the small blind decides to lead for $45. I'm not folding just yet, especially for that price, so I call, and we see the ace of diamonds on the river. Small blind isn't done betting though, this time $90. And now we're in an interesting spot. At first I contemplate raising as a bluff, and then I realize two things. One, I'm getting a good price with a good hand. And two, no one folds flushes anyways, right? So in the end, I decide to just call, and we end up beating Queen-9 offsuit. All right. And six is a 2-5 game at the Texas Card House in Dallas. And we see one of the next gen boys playing Pocket jacks. Don't you ever wish you just ran it once? Buckle up and strap in, ladies and gentlemen. We got pocket jellos in middle position. I open it up to $25. The player next to me calls, and the hijack comes in for the three bet to $75. And the cutoff calls the $75, and it gets back to me. This is the hijack's first hand dealt at the table. There is a ton of dead money in this pot. I think we go for the four bet here. I don't want to just flat out of position. Uh, I decide to size up to $300. In hindsight, I think this is wrong. I think we should uh, size a little bit smaller here because when uh, middle position next to me folds and the hijack rips it in our face for $740, uh, we don't feel too good and we've already got a lot invested. Cutoff folds back to me. I'm in pain. I wish I would have just four bet smaller so we can get away from our jacks here facing the five bet. In this case, uh, I don't think I can get away from it for the price we're now getting. I make the call. Hate my life. He's got aces. I still hate my life. And hopefully the poker gods can save us when we run it twice. 
Yes, they can. We flop quads on the first run out, and he hits an ace on the river, too. Just a crazy board there. We lose the second run out, and thankfully just chop this one up. Number five, it's Mariano again. Two videos in the first week. Mariano wins the multiple video award in week one. He's at the Talking Stick Resort in Scottsdale, Arizona, playing 3-5. And in this hand, he flops trips. But is it really a dream flop? Things are going much better now. Let's see if we can keep it going with pocket jacks in the small blind. There's an open from early position to 80. I'm definitely going to raise it up with this hand. So I make it 380. And after some thought, he makes the call. Heads up out of position to another incredible flop. Ace jack six with two diamonds. On this board, I would just bet all my hands for a small size. Middle set is no exception, so I throw out $250, but my opponent decides that's not enough before making it $900 to go. On top of that, this is the only other player at the table who's got over $3,000 in his stack. So yeah, dream situation here. Anyway, I think raising would be terrible, and I'm not folding either, so that just leaves one option. I make the call and cross my fingers for a clean turn card, which isn't exactly what we get. The King of Hearts putting a second flush draw out there and some possible straights, I guess. I check it and my opponent bets again, this time $900. After this bet, he's got around 2,000 remaining. So even though I don't hate just calling again, I prefer going all in right now since I'm out of position. So that's what I do. And after a few seconds, he makes the call. Suddenly we have almost $7,000 in the pot with one card to come. And that card is the Eight of Clubs. I turn my hand over and he shows Ace Queen of Spades. So three of a kind is good enough to win it. And we take down the biggest part of the night so far. At number four is our local Arizona heroine, Poker Face Ash. She's playing 3-5 at the Talking Stick on the very first day that no limit hold'em was allowed in Arizona. Up until January 2022, it was spread limit only. And in this hand, she flops a set, but will it hold? I raise the cutoff to 15 with pocket fours. The button, who is somewhat aggressive and either a pro or a semi-pro, raises to $65. The small blind, who was very passive and liked to call a lot of bets pre-flop, makes the call. And with stack sizes here and my implied odds against two players' ranges, I decide to make the call. The flop is 10 of hearts, Deuce of diamonds and the beautiful four of hearts. So we flop our set here. The small blind checks and I check it over to the pre-flop razor as I would do with almost all of my holdings. He bets $105. The small blind calls the $105. So now I'm looking to get more money in this pot. The small blind could have a draw that wants to see a turn card and the button who did three bet could show up here with a huge overpair or a decently strong holding. So I wanna put on max pressure. I raise to 300. The button snap shoves for 1200. The small blind folds and I make the call. He flipped over pocket aces. So of course I'm gonna do the respectful thing and show my set of fours. He turns a gutter to give me a little sweat and the river brings a brick and we scoop a $2,000 pot nearing the end of our session. And man, it feels good. At number three, Close to Broke is playing day two of the LAPO main event at the Commerce Casino in LA. It's an $1,100 buy-in. And I don't know, after this hand, you can understand why Tilt exists in the world of poker. We are in the small blind and we look down at 10-9 offsuit. It actually folds all the way to me. I'm going to go ahead and complete here. Just throw out 10,000 more chips to make the call. And our opponent thinks about it for a little while and decides to check it back. The flop is absolute gin. This is what the doctor ordered. It's 10-9-7. We flop two pair. I'm going to go ahead and check and my opponent decides to check it back. So we're looking to spring the trap at some point in this hand. I don't know when, but maybe at this point, the turn comes an inconsequential three. I bet 30,000 chips and he instantly snap raises me to 60,000 chips for what ever reason the case may be but for some odd reason i don't raise here i don't know why i don't raise but i didn't raise anyways we find ourselves on the river i check to him and he bets a hundred thousand chips which makes it more than half of my stack at this point i decide to make the call and he shows three four that happens so fast and even breaking this hand down i don't even know what, this, what the hell's going on yes he had three four offsuit 
and he went runner runner to beat me what the hell's going on i i mean i've dealt with some pretty frustratingly bad beats and this was just super obnoxious and it's gonna take a lot for me to get over this spoiler alert i don't Coming in at number two is Brad Owen, and he is playing in a 5-10 game at the Bellagio in Vegas. And how satisfying must it have felt? Because let's be honest, we've all faced Brad's opponent in a game of our own. After adding on and winning a small bomb pot, I'm dealt eight deuce offsuit in the big blind. Cut off limps in, he's the same dude who folded pocket queens pre-flop. I check, the flop comes queen eight deuce with two diamonds, we've got bottom two pair. I check, the cutoff checks back. The turn is the eight of diamonds, giving us a boat with two cards that I would have been happy to have folded pre-flop. I don't want this to check through again, so I bet 30. This is when things get interesting. The cutoff min raises to 60. I'm wondering if I should go for the re-raise now, or if I should let this dude hang himself. He's actually amassed a huge stack somehow, but he's had several drinks, and he's talking some trash. Get beat with YouTube, man. What is it? Five dollars or something? Five dollars, yeah. I fly in order to go for the check raise on the river. The dealer puts out the seven of spades. I check to the cutoff. I'm sort of concerned that this might get checked back. It doesn't. The guy is like Joe Montana coming through in the clutch with a bet of 100. He's not going to be too thrilled when I make my move. I raise to 400. The opponent's a bit of a serial tanker. At least he makes it fun by allowing us access to what's going on in his head. For a dude who had all the right reads, he gets a well-earned F for his play. Usually you don't want to raise someone that you believe to be strong and you definitely don't want to fire again on the river once you get called. It's not his fault though that he's in this situation. It's obviously the dealer's fault. The player earlier got a count on my chips. I have 1180 behind. I'm starting to think that this tank job might be an elaborate act and then he's gonna jam on me with queens full or something. I soon find out that's not the case when the opponent decides to turn over the jack of diamonds as if he's got the flush in order to get a reaction out of me. To be honest, I'm more worried about a real life Sharknado happening than I am about this guy's fake flush that he's wasting everyone's time with. If he had a flush, why not just flip over both cards? Instead, he keeps going on with the theatrics. Dude, I bluffed you earlier with 9-8 as a tribute to Tony the Goose Siragusa. He doesn't know that though. After a minute and 54 seconds goes by in a pot that isn't that large, the opponent folds what I imagine is Queen Jack offsuit. I never see what the other card is. I'm almost positive it's not a diamond. This particular opponent hasn't called me in one spot today, and I think he's being genuine with his belief that I don't bluff, so I'll for sure try to use that against him if I can find the right opportunity. Coming in at number one, and for this first week of 10 of the best from Suited Aces Poker, there was only one hand that could be in the number one slot. Here's your boy Ethan, Rampage Poker, playing 1-3 at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. And on one of the very last hands of the night, we decided to do a friendly $10 bomb pot. I'm in the hijack. We're going eight ways to the flop. Everyone put $10 in the middle. And I pick up Ace, Queen of Diamonds. Going to a flop, one board of jack, five, five, two diamonds. There's an early position bet of $45. Action folds to me, and on this paired board, I have the nut flush draw. I think raising is a little bit of an overplay as we can be behind some full houses. Also, you just never know what these players can have because it is a bomb pot at that. So anyways, I decide on a call with the nut flush draw and two overs, get the big blind to come along as well. And we're off to a turn, which is the King of Diamonds. Bink, get there with the nut flush. Like I said, it is a paired board, so got to be a little cautious. The early position player continues again for $125. And like I said, I just make the call. It's a bomb pot. Someone can easily have a full house. But I will say we also have a royal flush draw, though. But what's cool is that the big blind comes along for 125 and we're still going three ways to the river, which comes the 10 of diamonds. No freaking way it happened. We have the royal flush first time ever in my life and action checks to me. What the hell do I do here? Never been in this spot before in my life with the mega nuts with the best hand, the royal flush. I'm showing this hand regardless because I have to table it because that's what's going on in my mind right now. And I decided to go for a small sizing. I, I don't know. All right. Are there worse flushes out there? It's only a nine high flush. And I guess we could have cooled a full house, but I'd expect full houses to bet on the river as well. Anyways, I sized to $120. Get the big blind player to fold 
and onto this early position player and no freaking way puts in a check raise of four hundred dollars this player has like four to five hundred dollars behind what a dream spot going runner runner for a royal flush and getting check raised on the river this is just what dreams are made of right anyways got like four hundred dollars five hundred dollars behind uh, there's nothing to do but I guess take a little bit of time and not act too excited, then announce all in. On. All in? All in. All in. She doesn't look happy about it, but ultimately does end up making the call. Oh. Oh. I have a royal. Can I like take a picture and t shirt? Uh, Holy shit. It's my first royal. How do you get a royal? <laughs> oh my god. What a sick hand. She ends up later telling us she had pocket kings. What an ultimate cooler. The chips were going in no matter what and found the suck out one outer on the river. That is what you call being a luck box. And there we go, scooping a monster pile of chips. It's always nice to hit a royal, win a bunch of money as well, and especially in a bomb pot, who would have saw it coming? Finishing up week one with a royal flush. We couldn't have written it better ourselves. So there you have it, folks. Our 10 of the best for the first week in January 2022. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you next week. Good luck at the felt.